and I happen to be the president of the Maine Charitable Mechanic Association, also known as Mechanics Hall. And we are delighted that you are here this evening. Uh, this is one in a series of lectures that we do featuring people who make things, makers, in the broadest sense of the word, uh, in, uh, in our general area. And we've been doing them pretty much every month. Uh, not quite, but more or less. And we are just delighted to come to our coming and doing one of our lectures for us. There are a couple of upcoming things that I wanted to remind you of. We have coming on the 10th of October, uh, not to a Makers at the Hall uh, lecture, but at a sort of larger fundraising lecture, Earl Shuttleworth. And for those of you who haven't learned about Earl Shuttleworth yet, he uh, is the sort of guru of historic preservation in the state of Maine. He was for many years the commissioner of um, historic preservation at the state level. Uh, he has, since high school, been deeply engaged in historic preservation. And he is also blessed with an encyclopedic memory. So if you say to Earl, oh, to Earl so Earl, what is the story on 41 Spring Street in Bodenham? <laughs> He'll say, That was built in 1835 by Samuel so-and-so. And you're just like, how does he know? But anyway, he is doing a special lecture for us on Thomas Sparrow, who is the architect was, the architect for this building. And he built several other, he designed several other major buildings in Portland, but nothing has been written about it. So Earl took that on as a challenge. And he is doing a talk on Thomas Sparrow, plus the building of this building, plus the organization that built it in Y. Uh, and that's going to be again Wednesday, the 10th. Uh, the lecture itself will be at 7 up here in the hall. Our next maker at the hall will be in November, uh, and that's David Wallace. David Wallace, you may not know, but he's an organ builder. And he is also the person who maintains the, city, uh, the city's municipal organ in City Hall. Uh, and he builds and repairs organs all over the world. And so he is going to be here in the Yeah, what is it on October 31st? What is that? October 31st is Halloween. Right. And we decided Halloween was not the best time for a maker's lecture. And so instead of a maker's at the hall lecture, we are going to be having what's called a maker's mix. And the maker's mix uh, is an invitation to anyone who self-describes as a maker, or anyone who wants to come anyway. Uh, and we will have a party, basically, in the library. And uh, there are sort of parties where we're going to provide a little mic time, and people will be able to talk a little bit about what they make and why. But it's going to be very informal. It's more of a party. It's definitely not a lecture. And that party will be followed by a concert up here. It's sort of a tag end to the party. Uh, so those are some of the programs that we're doing. Um, I encourage you to go to our website if you ever want to know more about what our activities are, or if you sign up here, or if you become a member, we will automatically tell you what our activities are. <coughs> but tonight is Pandora, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Pandora the case, whom I've had the pleasure to know for quite a while. And um, Pandora is a sculptor. She's been a teacher also at Mecca and at USM, right? And um, somewhere along the line, she began sculpting with lights. And so I'm very curious to know tonight, how did this happen? And how did it come about? And uh, it is now a major part of our community. I was talking to someone audience earlier about how now we, we all own the lights. We love the lights. Those are our lights. If the lights didn't go up, we would all be extremely sad. So how did that all happen? Pandora. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank you, Pam. Thanks the uh, main uh, charitable mechanics association for inviting me. 
I thought I would I thought I would sort of start out at answering that question um, and then go from there. So the first um, the first park that I created uh, my light form installations in was Tommy's Park, and I I started doing that in 1998. Um, and the story goes that I was, at that point in time, I, was, I did a lot of children's workshops. I was part of a touring artist program. And the director um, and the assistant director of the Portland Downtown uh, District, that's what it was called back then, now it's Portland Downtown, uh, when I, they sponsored this workshop at the library. And uh, so I was there doing the workshop and Susan Cooper came up to me and she said, you know, we really, we're thinking about doing something, you know, in Tommy's Park, it's so dark, you know, in the winter, do you know anybody that works in light? And I said, I said, well, I will ask around. And then later in the day she came to me, she goes, well, do you think you can do something? And I said, why not? <laughs> So I, you know, so that was my, you know, introduction to Portland downtown and my in, introduction to doing site-specific works around the city. Um, I, I am a, I, I am a sculptor by profession or by schooling, and I studied uh, undergraduate work at uh, Orono, and then went on to get my master's of fine arts degree at uh, the University of Penn along with my two children and my husband who was an engineer at the time. But when, and so I wanted to give you a little bit of, um, so what I wanted to do was answer that question, but then also answer the question that a lot of people ask me is, um, what did you do before? So I thought I, I threw in a few slides, and that's Tommy's Park too, and I'll get back to Tommy's Park and talk more about Tommy's Park um, because it's when I first really started doing these um, public art um, are site specific in, in the space. But I thought I would give you a little, a uh, uh, couple of slides to show you what I was working on before I, um, I started doing light. Um, and I generally, from the very beginning start, was very interested in working in multimedia. So I would work mixed media. So I would combine different types of materials in my pieces. Um, and and I not only uh, combined, but I also was very interested in the connections. So I fabricated and, and, and turned on the metal lathe all my um, fasteners that I used in my pieces too. So this piece was a carving, and each element was carved separately. And it's an exploration of, it's an exploration of metal and wood and plexiglass, plexiglass being the fluid uh, wood being the organic warm and the metal being the cool and hard. So those were the three element, those were the elements that I was thinking of. But again, it's, it's three dimensional. Um, and so you have to think about, you have to think about space, the negative space all around it. And so those are all the things that I thought about, you know, in creating these types of pieces. Um, and this is a, it's a similar uh, idea with carving and, and plexiglass, and, um, and actually the metal is aluminum. And when I moved back to Maine, I started applying to, uh, well, I, I, I got commissioned to do some percent for art pieces. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but any public building or school uh, that is using public money, built in with public money, 1% goes to art. So they invite artists, so they have competitions. And, and I, was, um, I ha got a few commissions doing public doing um, uh, a present for art pieces in schools. And again, I started doing installations right off at that point, which, which means that I looked at the space, I went and photographed the space, or if it wasn't built yet, I looked at the drawings. Um, I made models and, um, and created, this, created the piece for the space. So this is the model of the piece, uh, and this is the actual piece. And this one was done at a school up in uh, Grey New Gloucester. Not, no, not Grey New Gloucester. Um, McCusick School up in, oh God, I don't remember now, up north. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember later. And uh, Guilford. And, um, and so when I went to, so we were sort of interviewed at that time frame. There was, they, they chose four artists to interview. And when they interviewed, I went up there, it was an evening. By the time I left, 
the, there was a moon. There was a full moon that came out, and it was one of the full, you know, it was one of the largest moons in the century. And so I, at that point, knew that I would do my theme around the full moon. But it was an elementary school too, so I, you know, wanted to be very playful with this. So this moon, the title of this is when the moon dressed up the birds followed suit. So, and that's still there. So I've done a few of those around the state of Maine. So, so we get, so right after, so Tommy Spock was my first one, and then PD, so I, so the Portland Downtown District um, started asking me to do different, different sites in, within the city. And the next one was Longfellow Square. And the difference between the two squares, they both get wrapped, and I only do three areas where I wrap all the trees. Um, and this is one of the areas that I wrap the trees and then, and then and put the forms within. So, um, and this one, as well as Tommy's Park and, and uh, Longfellow Square has sort of changed through the, not the piece, but the actual square has changed uh, through the years. But this one was, this piece is at a you know, major intersection. This installation is at a major interse intersection. And some of my thoughts about, about what I do in the space is what the, you know, is the, the space itself how you walk through the space, how people walk through the space, where it's located, and what's around it, all the, all the elements that make up this space, which this one, one of the major elements was not only the statue, but the trees. And the trees are different than Tommy's. They're much more, they're, they're much shorter, they have more branching, they, um, and so all those different things come into play when I'm thinking about how I want this to be. So, you know, for me, this, piece, this place was an intimate space, um, and uh, the trees are very close to you, so um, so the branching really made a difference. What I, how much light I put on it, and the branching, and what the forms are. Um, and then, um, and then, PD wanted to do the following year. They wanted to do all the street poles along the street, but not all of them. We did we did a, you know five or six one year, and we now they're just about all. The, there's about forty poles. But when they did that, when, when Barbara Hager asked me to do uh, the street lights, I also went to the main College of Art. Uh, Roger Gilmer was the uh, president at that point. And I said, uh, well, PD is doing, we're doing some stuff all along the street, the, the, cor the Congress uh, Street Corridor. It might be nice, would you like me to present a proposal to do Mecca, the building? And so this is, what, this is the original drawing I gave him. To, uh, to do it. My proposal was to come from the roof, to go to the canopy and have these forms just sort of spill onto the canopy. Um, and so, and that's uh, installing it. So installing it, the canopy has, a, so the, the building is a historical building also. So I was very, cons I'm very considerate of my spaces. And this one in particular, it. I do not attach anything to this building with brackets or, I mean, with uh, fasteners or anything. Everything is sandbagged. The, the, uh, the scaffold, this is actually an early picture. The scaffolding on the roof has changed a little bit. It's much more uh, complex. Uh, but none of it is uh, actually bolted anywhere. And the rooftop um, structure on top is cantilevered over just a little bit. and goes back and sometimes we tether that but it doesn't have to be tethered either. So this is all constructed in that kind of way and it's we bring everything up to the canopy and we and we someone's on the roof and it gets pulled up uh, up to the roof and then is attached up there. And so that is the newer version. This is the first place to I think this is the first place where I started um, connecting my work with um, uh, computers with PLCs and programming, uh, and this one, the the main college of art uh, has uh, two different nights. So one night it's blue and white, and the next night it's red, gold, and white, uh, and then they alternate each night. I I very rarely make quick changes in color. I usually do night to night. Um, so this one, I have a few pictures of this because uh, there are people that take pictures and they send them to me, and I think that they just some of them are really nice. They show the colors, and this one you can really get a sense. And the, they, these are all threaded on aircraft cable. These these forms that 
cable goes right up through them. And so they can turn a little bit. They don't turn all the way around, but they, but they have a little movement to them. So, so Boothby Square, um, this, this square has changed a little bit, but I've been, I think I've been there since um, 2001. So um, when they asked me, and this is also through uh, Portland Downtown District, when they asked me to do uh, this square, um, the, the, it's, it has an axis of east-west, and the, axis, the entrance on the west the, and the east, they narrow as you, go, as you come and go, but in the middle, it expands. And there's two planters, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. There's two planting areas, and I chose the two planting areas I wanted, and I chose, um, and, and I wanted uh, pieces that were up high. But you know, there's no, there's no trees here, and there's, the buildings are um, different sizes, and there are a lot of openings. So with this piece, I decided that I wanted to use, pole, I would put the forms up on poles. And so the poles are around um, 10 feet tall, and then the pieces themselves go another eight feet up. But I also wanted, um, I wanted some gesture from, my, from these pieces. And, and so what I did was I, you know, you, can, you sort of relate to your body with this piece. You know, you have, the, you have the bottom, the middle, and the top. And I made them, I made them so that they gestured, so that each piece, each piece not only um, moves in different directions, each section, there are eight sections, three on, on the west, five on the, on the east coming in. And each, each section, each uh, three forms, has its own gesture. And they're all, all the forms are all different too, so they react to each other. So the negative space, so you can see how there's negative space and everywhere you walk around that negative space sort of comes together and expands. So it's, it's, it's a different view every, everywhere you go in that. So, um, and so these are the mechanics of it. I just thought I'd throw these in so you can see how everything is thought of and the weight is calculated too so that, so that as you're moving, as they're moving back and forth, how, how the forms relate but also um, the angles that we needed to adjust. And we also, for this one, we also designed um, the housing for the electrical. Instead of in the beginning, they were all plugged into, uh, I had to run wire and plug it into the outlets on the side. So uh, a few years back when they were redesigning the square again, <laughs> I, we talked to the uh, elect city electrician and we said we'd like to present, with, present to you some housing so that we can actually bring all the electricity up the poles and nothing's ever seen and it's all protected. So this was the drawing for that. And that's another view of that. So you can see how they sort of move from each side. And when I changed to LEDs, it, it really changed the way you kind of saw the lights, the forms. Sometimes they look like they're in front of each other, but they're not, you know. So they change, they're constantly shifting positions visually. And there's another one that someone sent me looking up. And then, uh, and then the Friends of Deering Oaks asked me to do, uh, start doing some work for them. Uh, and this is our first installation. So we do all the, the, the uh, designing, the fabricating, the installing, and the takedown, and all the maintenance for most of the Portland downtowns and, and a lot of other groups. And this is the first year of Deering Oaks. I just used one, uh, a couple of different trees and created this uh, disc shape. Uh, which is still there. These, these, um, this, one, this one I did, uh, I started doing in, moving right along here, 2002. So uh, this was the first time I did uh, this. And so I, what I did was I decided to use a, a color, one color on the form, and then highlight the trees with another color using gels. It was, a, it was kind of a bulky way to do it. So um, the next year, the next year we added more forms and with Deering Oaks, um, it's a big park with very big, beautiful trees. Uh, the, the, and I just think of these trees as very majestic trees. And so what, um, and so the, and we, uh, this picture is just to show you that we, we are out there in, in the winter too. <laughs> too. <laughs> it gets very cold. But you can see these trees, these trees are massive. They've been there for a long time. Some are heritage trees. Um, 
and um, but they are they're all throughout the park so what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a moment or you know a place and so the the perfect spot was the pond you know the pond is there there's all these trees around the pond and, and, and it gives a sense of place so we so we chose the pond to do um, to do the installation and then I picked um, now we have six six uh, trees around um, the pond and we we uh, so they encompass the pond as as you go around but you can never get a picture of the whole pond with the lights in it's another hard thing to do so this is the last reiteration it's gone through a few different the forms you know sometimes I don't like a form that I've done so I I change it you know and, and I have a lot of freedom that way it costs me a little money sometimes <laughs> but if I don't like it I can't see I can't keep it up there so I've come up with these and I like these forms but this this uh, park is also um, it is also uh, has a PLC, and each tree has its own PLC computer, and it's all programmed, and they're and they're synced, you know, they're they're synced, um, well, well, they're timed, they're all sort of synced in timing, and I have two different color lights on the each form. I have two different uh, color, so the disc shapes have white and blue, the uh, oblong. Um, shape has red and green because I'll never use red and green together and then the uh, yellow the the spheres have gold and purple so it is programmed for five day five for seven days and each night is a different scenario using those uh, six colors so in the beginning when I first did it people would come up to me and say look I have a bet with my wife I'm telling her it's this it's this color this color and I go and she's saying it's this color and I go and you're both right <laughs> so, no. so no but but the idea for this one I didn't it was not a place where I would wrap trees in and, and the idea is that um, that you glimpse the trees by the light from the forms projecting on it, so that you're you're seeing you're seeing these floating forms all around the park, all around the pond. But you also get a glimpse of these limbs that they're attached to. So you get to, you get to see these large oak trees in the dead of winter and the dead of night. And I and I I really love these trees. Uh, and here's another, there's another color scheme, so that's another night. And I'm very limited with my colors in, in LEDs too, so I have to really make the most of it. And in the background you can see the candelabra tree, you can see it, oh, I'm, I'm pointing it <laughs> back there. You can just see a glimpse of the, of the candelabra tree, which is the, it's a hundred year old tree, but I guess it's not the oldest, I guess the oldest is a 200. A 200-year tree, yeah, uh, but it's a hundred years old, and um, this came about. Uh, it's still through the Friends of, of the Deering Oaks; they sponsor it. But a a gentleman came to Deering Oaks, so Ann Pringle, and said that he would like to donate an installation, um, and he would like to use this tree. I think he would like to. He wanted to use this tree uh, for a birthday present for his wife. And so, and, so, um, and so this tree, the nickname, it's a, a large pin oak tree, but the nickname is the candelabra tree. And it has these amazing, as you can see, it has these amazing horizontal tr limbs. And they're huge limbs, you know, and then they have some that are a little more upright. So I guess that's how it got its name, you know, the idea of this, you know, tree and the way the, the, way the limbs are circling around it. But I wanted to play with that, I, I wanted to play with that idea. And so... But I didn't want to wrap it, but I wanted to uh, highlight the linear and curvilinear aspect of these branches. And then I hung um, sort of shapes that I think look like flames, you know. So, so, and so that's how I came up with that one, that idea. It's a single tree, too. It's in the rose, it's in the rose so it's, it's a single tree there. Um, and then, um, and then these are the forms that I first did for Congress, uh, Congress Square Park. Um, and this, um, this is also done with uh, 
sponsored by uh, Portland Downtown District. And this is the first time that, if you can see some of these forms, that blue one in the middle up there, it's this, it's this huge disc, but it's asymmetrical, which means that a lot of my forms are start from a center, and then they radiate out symmetrically. So each line that comes out is, is the same all the way around. But these forms, there's a couple in there, are not. They're asymmetrical, so that they move in a different way. You know, they're, they're, and my son helped me work out the formula for these because each wire, and I'm going to show you pictures of how I make these, each wire is cut at a different length and bent at a different part. So, so there's probably, uh, I don't know, 20, at least 20 wires that go around that one blue form. Uh, and that form, is, it's about six feet. It's about six feet wide. And so and there's a couple others that do it. And it's the first time I also, I also put forms within forms, which are really very difficult to string with lights. <laughs> with lights. You know, it's a challenge. So you, you learn through that how you have to make them so that uh, you can get your hands in there. But these forms are no longer there, but they are somewhere. But, um, uh, oh, uh, and this shows you that I started, I started doing private residences too. And sometimes I get a gig where I actually go there to actually do some of the work and then install it on site. So this was a nice place in, that I did in Casco Bay and got to stay out there for a while, which was perfect for me. And then this, and this, is, the, uh, this is what it looks like. It, it also is computerized, but I don't have pictures of all the different colors. Well, there, I have one other one, I guess. It, it, this place is now has the color scheme of blue and white, so they do change. And then I went to Texas and did a and and stayed there for a couple of weeks doing an installation down there. And that's that you can hardly see in there, but it's a big again. It's a big. Um, it's a big. Um, God, I forget what kind of tree it is, but it's an ancient, ancient tree, and some of the some of the limbs are actually on the ground growing. So it was like a ranch house that we got to stay at. So it's very nice, and I'm thinking it needs repairs this year. <laughs> so and then, um, so the next thing, this is still, we're still on, uh, this, is, this is also uh, Portland Downtown. Uh, it's been very fortunate to do a lot of work in Portland Downtown, and, and also it's where I uh, explore lots of different new things. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a very, in, I have a lot of freedom in what I do. And so this is the, so uh, Portland Downtown wanted to do um, the uh, Commercial Street Corridor. And uh, I had a really hard time with this one. I don't know if you, you guys know, probably all know Commercial Street. It's a visually busy street. It's got light poles everywhere, wires everywhere. The, the, the street is, is is wide, so the connection between buildings to buildings is harder, uh, and the sidewalks. And so, um, so finally, I, and a lot of times I think of things in my mind. So I go down, I usually go down and take pictures of wherever I do an installation, and then, and then of all different aspects of it. And sometimes I go two or three times and walk in the space, and, and so, um, Finally, I figured out that the real thing about uh, the, the consistent element that, um, that really talks about Commercial Street was the buildings. You know, they're, they're, um, they're row after row of these brick buildings, they, um, you know, and they are, um, you know, some of them are very old, some of them are very new, but they have these great facades. You know, and who doesn't like a good facade? I don't know. But um, so I thought of doing the, I thought of doing a theme using the facades of the buildings and, and uh, putting them up high. And, um, but the problem with that was they all, pro they're all privately owned. So um, I think it was Jan Beitzer at the time. She, she contacted some of the building owners down, down on Commercial Street and and three of them, and so the deal was that um, would they like to be part, you know, would they, their, would they like their building to be part of the commercial street installation? 
And so three owners came forward right off. And, uh, and then we did the parking garage, which is publicly owned. So we had four buildings right in the beginning. And the theme on this, and Commercial Street is also uni unique in the sense that it, um, it borders the ocean, you know? So it's our ocean front. So I wanted to sort of do play around with that idea of the ocean front. And so I came up with the, I came up with the sphere and the orb coming out of the building, and, but a lot of them are half spheres, so they're not full spheres, although there are a few of them on there. So that, and now we've got, oh, I think we've got um, 62 forms on seven buildings down there. So it's grown. And, and, and people who want to include their building generally have to pick up the initial cost of the installation and then, um, and then the maintenance and ongoing uh, install and takedown is, is done through Portland Downtown. It's now Portland Downtown. And that, somebody sent me this picture, and I thought that was really neat. That's looking up. Uh, and I, and I, uh, I, this is the L.L. Beans. And uh, when they asked me to do work, it sort of grew. I, was, I think I, I did work for them for about 10 years, since 2005. And last year was the last year. Uh, the year before was the last year. But um, it ended up, I did the whole campus up there. Uh, and and did in, did sort of installations, you know, in different areas of the of the campus, with different color themes. This this year happened to be red, white, and warm red, warm white, and green. And then I ended up doing their Christmas tree too, and I did that for many years. Um, um, and one year it actually fell, and I said, no problem, I'll fix. <laughs> I don't put it up. So luckily, I don't have anything to do with the structure of putting it up. Uh, I just put things on it. So, it. so they got it back up, and I made it look OK for that year. It was kind of sad. Um, and it's the first time that I've done things in water. So, um, so this is uh, installing in water. <laughs> and, and, and it's pretty cold, and you do have to wear waders and, and things, and your hands are always cold. And this is my daughter. <laughs> she sacrificed herself one year for me, and that's what it looks like. In the, in the. So it's possible to do in water. Uh, you have a daughter that's willing. Yeah. yeah well, I have a, other people in the end. You work, you do, you do water, but we're not doing that one anymore. Uh, and so then uh, Congress Square, the forms at Congress Square, um, so when the Friends Group at Congress Square, when they were formed, um, this was I think a couple years ago, 2014, um, they asked me to, uh, they sponsored a, a re-looking at, a re redesign of Congress Square Park. Uh, and since then the trees have really grown up quite a bit. Uh, and so. Um, so I decided to use the trees and wrap the trees. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with um, this being a, a, a the, the area of this, of this space is really devoid of trees other than this park. Uh, there's not a lot of street trees here. Uh, and it also, um, the trees, uh, there, you know, in, in a way, people don't realize how many trees are really there. You know, by, so by highlighting, especially in the wintertime, so by highlighting, there are nine trees in this park. There's, oh, I, so I have over 30 forms hanging in these trees. Uh, and some of the trees are really large um, also. But anyway, it's the three parks that I do where I wrap the trees and hang forms. And, uh, and then I alternate, I also alternate the color scheme each year. So, um, so each color, each year there's a color scheme. Sometimes the purple forms, sometimes the forms stay co same color for a few years because I don't restring them. And so you can see in the distance back there, there's these little dots. There's a red one, two reds and a white, and you can't see the other one. Well, that's the PMA building. And so I actually don't have a picture of the PMA building. <laughs> Uh, by itself, because they're way up there and they're really hard to take a picture of. But the PMA building, so as I said, I do, I do drawings. Um, so when I actually, I actually um, do
do a lot of uh, designing in my head, but I do then sketch a little bit using drawings, and then for the final presentation, I do I, I give them something like this so they can actually see what it might look like in the space. Um, and these are actually discs, not orbs. So you can sort of see it there. They're they're flat, so they're and they turn, and these do turn a lot. Uh, so sometimes and they turn separately. So sometimes they look like a sphere, you're seeing them straight on, and sometimes they turn just a little bit, so you only see part of it. Just like, you know, the full moon, you never see all of it at once, unless it's full. So, um, so, and this is installing it for the first time. Well, I don't know if it was the first time or not, but, so we had to design some brackets that fit in those, those holes there. And I think I, I realized I was going to do these holes right from the beginning. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't think I can. And they're also obviously computerized too because sometimes um, I, there's four of them. Sometimes they all can be red. Sometimes they all can be white. Sometimes one will be w red, three will be white. So there, there's, a, there's a program that will change them every night. How am I doing? You guys all stay awake still? <laughs> so... Um, so this, so this was a, a proposal down for a, it's a temporary piece, uh, and it was at the Kendall Square in Cambridge. Uh, and it was a sort of, it was a sort of industrial site also, but it was, they're trying to make the, and it's the waterway, and they're trying to make, um, there's a lot of new buildings around there, uh, a big biotech company, a big, you know, other things, and also uh, uh, Cambridge is down there. So, but it had, um, it really was a big open space with a lot of sand in it and hardly anything. They had some furniture for eating and stuff like that. So I really, um, I didn't really see something that would be intimate and, and work with. So what I did was I, I created something that, um, I, I created something that um, was its own place. So that, and this is, this is sort of the first time I've done something that's kind of functional. They're seating, you know, so it's seating. So it's its own place. It has its own, you know, sort of own little, it creates its own little setting, and this is it here. And, um, and the, the, the base pieces are metal, um, and then the wood seats are in between, and it's sort of like a, and the, the base, so I was looking out my studio window one day, and I, in, in the parking lot beyond me, there was these Jersey barriers, you know, and Jersey barriers are just the ugliest things. But I liked the idea that, I liked the idea of the triangle shape, you know, and it, and it serves its purpose. It's narrow at top, and, and, and where you need it to have its strength, it's at the bottom. So I, so that's where this, this shape came from, but I, curved it and made it a little, little more elegant looking and, and, uh, and then created these lights on the top of them. And, that, and that's what it looks like on the side. So it was all that work for just a temporary installation. <laughs> I was kind of hoping they would keep it there, but, but it didn't. It didn't stay there, but it did find a home. And it's up in Lewiston now, and that's the setting for it at this point in time. And again, this is, a, this is another drawing that I present, so I try to get the picture of the place. This is down at Leventhal Square, so I've sort of branched out now. I'm going other places uh, in Boston, which is a beautiful park, um, and it has all the garages underneath it, and it has huge trees all through it. I didn't want to use the trees. Um, I didn't want to use hanging things from the trees in this park, but... Um, sh uh, so I decided to do something on stands that, uh, that was a little more playful in that sense and more immediate to people walking by. So these are the shapes, and they're all sort of an organic shape based, you know, based on the oval and the sphere and stuff. And these, and these this is a nice, uh, and I also did another piece, which I don't show the pictures of that. They have a big um, walking uh, wooden arbor and I have some forms in there too. So this was the second thing I did down there for them. And what's nice about this is that I create it, build it, 
and I put it, install it first time, and then they take care of it. They'll call me if, I, if they need anything, but they take it down and they put it up each year. So it's, it's a nice relationship, um, and that's them up close. And then this is Chestnut Hill, um, which I did a huge installation for them. They have, like, they have five sites, but, um, uh, and again, they wanted all spheres and stuff, and they wanted them to be all changing, they wanted changing colors too, but they never, I, I, they never changed the colors. So there was, different, there was two different schemes that they could use. They never changed the colors, so last year I said, well, if you're not going to use them, let's, let's simplify this whole thing, you know, so, you know, so we're, we're slowly just doing one color scheme for them. And that's, that's them hanging in their trees. And it's a mall down there, it's at the street, so they, but it's a, it's a mall where it's not inside, it's a walking, it's an outside mall, so that's why they wanted to do something like this. And this is up at Farnsworth. And so this is sort of the same kind of thing that I do at the, at the, um, uh, on Commercial Street. So I brought it up there. Okay, so now, I, so these next slides, I'm going to show you um, the, the uh, Tinker Toy design. <laughs> so uh, this is, so these are the materials that I would use um, for the smallest and the easiest of my form, which is the 18 inch. Uh, sphere. So you can see I have these collars. I call them collars on either end with the holes in them. I call them collars. They're fab I have them fabricated and then uh, they, they're welded onto a stainless steel rod. That's my in, internal, um, the centerpiece. Uh, and then, um, and that's the Tinker Toy idea. And then uh, I use epoxy Am I in your okay, guys? Wait. I use epoxy, and I put the epoxy in each separate hole, uh, going around. And it doesn't. I use the twenty-minute one, so it doesn't set up too quickly here. And then I start bringing the spring wire. So all the wire I use is spring wire. It's what you make springs out of. It keeps its memory. And I can bend it, and I can, you know, and and then I can I can bend it. I can also make a a, a tight bend. So some of those. Um, more complex forms are, I, I actually use a bender to bend them. So that's basically how I create these forms. And you're all welcome. You can, I'm going to be building some pretty soon here, some new ones. So. <laughs> and then these, so I started uh, doing other kinds of shapes that, that don't go, come off the, the center. Uh, and these, uh, some of these I have, uh, I ha have outs I've outsourced the fabrication of them. And this is the stain, and this is a permanent installation done on uh, the J.B. Brown, Brown building on, on uh, Danforth Street. And at the time, you know, so uh, again, the, the shape of that one was sort of inspired by, you know, sailing. And it was the first time I've used something like that. And you can see how they come off the building. Um, they billow out from it, and that uh, this is the this is the picture, which is a hard picture to see. But they uh, I light them. It's the first time I also light with the three schemes too in one form. So there there's a band of blue, a band of gold, and a band of white in that. And we do all we design all the brackets that go on the buildings too. So. And these are the forms uh, that, I, that go on the, um, the Press Hotel. I started doing these last year. Now, the first, form, the first year I did Press Hotel, I had these fan shapes, and I did not like the fan shapes. So I, um, I said, oh, well, they wanted more. I said, well, let's, let's, let's look at a different shape. So I, got, so I like this shape better. It, it, um, it uh, works with the building a little bit more. Oops, sorry, how do I go back here? So these sort of, you'll see these this year. They, they, um, they sort of are curvy, linear, and, they, and I have brackets, and I'm actually making new brackets for these so they come off the building even more, sort of, sort of depicting sort of uh, paper floating down the building, which I think goes with their theme much better than what I had before. 
And so this is sort of a new idea. It's not going anywhere yet, but, um, but just to show you my thinking and my thought process of, you know, sometimes I'll just sort of think of things. And this is the basement of Rennie's. And this is where everything is stored. And so these are the, the, the ones up front. These are the discs for, De for Deering Oaks. And you can see the pods back there and the spheres and then yonder. So I have a really big space. It used to be the old Woolworths department's uh, basement. Whoops. Ah, touchy. So, and then these are some of the forms. Um, the asymmetrical form, that big one that I showed you, you can see now it up close. And then there's another one, another one. And this is last year's installation at, at um, uh, Lincoln Park, and you can see this is where those forms went. So I've repurposed them, um, and the friends of uh, Lincoln Park asked me last year if I would do an installation down there, and they raised the money. Um, and um, it was a little late in the year, but I knew I had some forms that I could use for this piece. And, I, and I've gotten them, got the forms, you know, some have been made, but, but um, a lot of the forms from Congress Square came here. And um, it's a really historical park, and I wanted to use the trees in here again because the, the trees are, um, they're very large, and they've been there forever, some of them. Uh, and, but I wanted also to, I also wanted to, you know, in all my work, I try to create these um, moments, and sometimes, you know, moments of magic and, and, um, and, and sort of fun, too. But I wanted to, I also wanted this one to be, have a little more quiet to it, and, um, and I wanted the, I used a light scheme, so, so every single shape in here is different, and there's over 40 shapes, which include the inside ones. Um, so I wanted to do a simple color scheme. You know, I chose warm white and gold, and I wanted it to have warmth, so that's why I chose those, and I wanted them to be sort of like, you know, the old-fashioned chandeliers hanging outside, you know, type of thing, the funny, the funny forms. I had a young girl, uh, not this summer, but summer before, this young, this young uh, child. Her father brought her up to me. I was up in Congress Square, and her father brought her up to me. And, and her father said, do you, she goes, I said, my daughter has a question for you. And she said, she goes, you know, I really like what you're doing for Congress Square, your forms and stuff this year. She says, but I really miss the forms, the funny forms that were there before. And I said, well, I said, I said, wait for this winter. I said, you'll see them again. You know, so, so now they're down here. So that was, I thought, really cute. And here's my, here's, I, I like hanging out with the next, with the next generation of makers. <laughs> so here they are, the grandchildren, working, working, working. And there, and that's the end. Let's come back to the beginning. <laughs> Internship, yes, 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 yes. Well, I didn't want to go that far. So I think we have time for questions and stuff. If anybody has any questions, or... absolutely. I think anyone who has questions, so why don't you just go right ahead and ask them directly? You don't need to run them through me. How do you secure the pipes to the frame? I see my frame. <coughs> Wire ties. No, no. Yeah, well, you, you, they're not just wound round and secured at the end. Do you? Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. Yes, yes. And the first time I started doing it, I would do, so if I have a sphere, I would do the first strand, second strand, third strand. And I discovered that, you know, in the, when I first started, the lights, you know, sometimes the whole strand would go out in the middle of the season. And, the, and then you have this weird looking shape. And so my daughter was home from college one, one summer, and so obviously she worked for me. So she, um, so she came up with the idea of a spiral. So the first strand spirals down, and it's all connected with wire ties, those little black wire ties. And so she, we spiral down, and then we connect, and we spiral back up and connect. So uh, then one bit goes, you've still got some coverage in the whole. You've got, exactly. It's a little less light, but you still see the whole form, yeah. Some of these forms have... I only use, I don't use like a hundred strands because, you know, it's too iffy. 
you know. So I only use 50 lights on a strand, and so some of these lights have, you know, it, you know, 15 to, to 16 light strands on them, those big shapes. Because it's important to be able to get, you know, to describe the, sh the the lights, the form itself is made of the wire, but the lights, when they're on, describe the form. So you want to make sure you have good coverage. Yeah. So you were saying that, for instance, the lights on Maine College of Art have two colors that change each night. Do you, are you programming the LEDs to change, or do you have two sets of lights? Uh, some have two sets of lights on them. So you're turning one off and turning the other. So the, 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 computer, the computer actually tells, the light, tells which light's going to be on, what color is going to be on. So you actually just sort of switch one off. Two so different strands rather than programming. Yeah, no, no, that's, they do have that now, but it's cumbersome. You know, it's, it's a lot of, a lot of, um, it's a lot of um, components, you know, so it, you know, so. How many lights are on? On a tree, on one of those trees, uh, between 90 and 100. Well, now that we use a, wrapped, just wrapped, yeah, now that we have LEDs, uh, we can do a lot more because they take a lot less energy, so we can do more. Um, and, um, and the tree has grown. Mm -hmm. I used a 45 lift when we started, now I use a 60 foot lift. And they've really grown a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea, so I want to get back to the, if, I want to just for a moment get back to Tommy's Park because it was my first park. Um, I chose, and I didn't have to choose the trees, but I noticed that in that space, that's a sort of a, a, a dark, it's a corner uh, with two roads, roads going, you know, go, with two roads intersection. But it is, um, um, so it's sort of tucked in there, and it can be really kind of dark. And the trees, the trees are lined up in a diagonal that go through the park. But I noticed when people were walking, they walk through the park like this. You know, they never look up. You know, and I really, the, the, space, is, the space is really vertical. You know, and I wanted to get that sense of, of moving you up, you know, moving you up to the height of the space, because it, it's, it, it has a lot of height. And so, um, and so that's why I wrapped the trees here. So that's, and, and the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to get a sense of, it's, I don't just wrap trees. I try to think about the tree, and real, if I'm doing trees together, the relationship of the trees together. So I think about which branches I, wanna, I want to highlight because I want them to talk to each other, you know, and when they move in the wind, I want them to move with each other. So, so it's, you know, so Tommy pa Tommy's Park is the first one I ever did, but it's also the one we leave last every season to do. So it's sort of like, it's sort of like our special, special place. It's where I learned a lot about this kind of, of uh, uh, site-specific designs. Hi. So I just want to introduce myself. I'm Casey Gilbert, the Executive Director of Portland Downtown. So you've heard a lot about our organization tonight. I don't have a question, but I really just want to say it's such a pleasure to work with you, and you're such a jewel and a gem for the city, and we're just so lucky and blessed to have you, and I hope that you never, ever <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Casey. I've been going on four years and just to understand deeper your legacy and to see your artistic vision, it's just so inspiring. And I just wish that there was an award and an honor that we could bestow upon you and you know, parade you around the city because I really think that this is so special. It makes Portland so special and you're just an inspiration to everyone. And we do have a secret part. That's going to be we do have, I didn't mention it, did I? <laughs> so stay tuned, we've got another surprise in the works, but I just, I admire you so much, and you have such a wonderful and talented family, and so I just want to say thank you for continuing to work with Portland Downtown, and we're just so blessed, blessed to have you, and I can't wait to see the lights come on at the tree light. So that's well, it, all I want to say, and always in awe of you. <laughs> thank you. I actually want to add on to that, um, that, um, and, and when I first moved here and started doing this, this, these installations, 
Um, I worked with a lot of city people, um, and not only Portland downtown, but I worked with uh, Jeff Talling, who is still here at the city, uh, city arborist. I worked with Ke I work I still work with Kevin Thomas, who who uh, heads up one of the public works department, uh, and many other electricians and and people within the city. And for me, it's been a real collaboration of 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 being able to to do what I do. Uh, and um, you know, and create these things. Uh, so, and it's and the other thing is, um, and to be embraced by the community has meant you know a lot, and has enriched my work as well as my life. So, so I wanted to add that. Is there any other questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I, have, I was curious, like how your process of creating the form, going to a structure and choosing the spring wire and considering the lights and how to, how to attach the lights, the weight of the lights, how many lights, you know, what that process looks like. And how you came up with airplane wire for... Aircraft ca a cable. Well, it's very strong. So it, you can do it thin and strong at the same time. So, and it's, um, um, so when I first started, when I first started, I thought I would collapse the forms so that people could store them with the lights on them so I designed them so that they would move and I put a, and I, I, I uh, cinched each wire onto these little uh, connectors that would go around the rod and stuff and after the first year I said nobody's going to collapse them and and this was just way too much work so then I had to come up with a system that I, there was always part of a center thing though and so then I came up with a system like this um, and um, and the thing about it is that the calculation of, you know, understanding what my limitations are um, within a piece, you have to make, you have to describe, a, you have to describe a form with wire so that when you're putting lights on, it has, it, you can, you can describe it. It, it doesn't lose its shape. So there are some forms, I had done some forms for Longfellow Square, some little, angular forms and I noticed that that you know just by trial and error that it was really hard to capture that form the way I was doing it so I have to sort of it's just trial and error you know I will take a, a, a wire and just bend it and see how it looks and before I describe the whole thing with the wire so and I do a lot of drawings of, of the shapes I like and and then continue on so the, the spring wire um, was the only thing I could find that um, would have a memory and would keep its shape. For, some of these forms are, uh, well, you know, Deering Oaks was, what did I say, in 2001. So those forms, is, that disc shape is still, is still here, and some of the other forms are too. So it lasts for a long time. And the... And, and everything that we do, um, well, my husband's an engineer, and some of the structural stuff he develops for me, and he also does all my computer, my PLC. And then I've gone out to other structural firms, too, if I need to do, do certain things. But um, McMaster Car has a lot of stuff in it, you know, a lot of, a lot of these little mechanisms and stuff, and you can figure things out uh, how to do it. I wanted to do stainless steel as much as possible because it lasts longer. Um, the spring wire, I now found a source where I can get stainless spring wire. Before, I, I couldn't uh, get it, so most of the things had to be painted. But some, not, some of the ones like Leventhal, I'm not painting them. Um, so it's just sort of trial and error through the years of what I like. I did, I did an, I've done three places up in Brunswick, and this one facade, and, and um, and I did this form the first year, and I thought, oh, my God, it looks like a blob up there. You know, so, so the next year, you know, I said, so I said, George, I'm going to change your forms. You know, I didn't charge him, but I didn't like them. I didn't, you know, I thought they were, were not successful. And so the next year, I just didn't change them completely. I just bordered them, thinking that that would, you know, give them a border. Still, I didn't like it still. And so I redid the whole thing the third year without judging him. <laughs> but, you know, I, you know, for me, it's, um, I, can't, I can't keep things up there that I think that I, you know, 
I don't think are successful. So it's just, you know, I, you learn, you know, you learn as you go along. And all the different ways that I attach things, you know, it's, it's about the simplest way possible, the strongest way possible, and the least, um, the least visual invasive as possible. So all my mechanisms are either, it's just like my for earlier work, you know, they, they have to be beautiful. Everything has to be beautiful that, that comes into the making of it. And what's the weight to form ratio as far as the lights to the form? Do you see what I mean? Like, do, are the lights heavier than the form? The form light, you know, you have to take that. The forms are very light. The, the forms are very light. They're about 25 pounds, 25 pounds. You put a little bit of lights on it. Doesn't take, it doesn't weigh that much more. It's maybe five pounds more. It depends on the size, the size of it. Uh, are you, uh, so I've noticed that they're, they're different and from year to year um, in different squares, for instance. Um, is it, are, are the lights actually changing? Or are you putting all new forms in, for instance, Longfellow Square? Um, no, each installation, for basically, each, each installation is, has its own form. Uh, the only thing that changes, so everywhere in the city, Deering Oaks has always got those forms. Mecca always has what they have. What changes, the only things that change are the, uh, maybe the color scheme because I've got different color lights on it, or those three parks, parks that I wrapped the trees, those change. So those ch that, ch ch that color scheme changes in those parks. So for instance in Longfellow Square, when it's a different color, you actually put different lights on those, those that year, or? It uh, sometimes I do two years. So if I do gold one year with red and purple, then I can do gold again with green and white or something. So I try to keep it because, you know, I try to keep the, the forms the same color. I didn't use to. I used to change every single year. And then I said, well, wait, you know, I've got more to work with here. So now I'm changing just every two years the forms. And one of the questions is that how is it determined, like the length? Because I would want them up a solid month longer than they are. I'm like, just when we're wanting, right? Just when winter's at its worst. Well, you can talk to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, we keep them up in the winter. I, they're on. The, the ones, so everybody, so everybody in the city sort of goes with the, what, what PD does as far as time frame. Even the private ones, the hotel and Mecca. You know, and I basically control it all for the most part. Um, so, so basically everybody, except for Deering Oak, sometimes will be turned on a little bit later. And Linking Park, they, they want to be turned on a little later. But generally the day after Thanksgiving, I go around with the crew, sometimes just my husband and I, go around and plug everything in. Because nothing, you know, there, every street pole has to be plugged in separately. Some things don't. <laughs> Some things you could just turn on. But I, everything gets plugged in that day, the day after Thanksgiving. And then, and then it's about three months. We get through the winter. So generally by Valentine's Day, uh, the, sun, the sun's here longer, the daylight's longer. So between February 14th and March 16th, we pick a day. If there's lots of snow, you know, we keep, we keep it up. Yeah, so it's Because I feel like March, like late February, well into March is the time we need the lights. <laughs> yeah, it's just before spring. Spring is nowhere near us. <laughs> well, sometimes there's no snow and it's, it seems warm and stuff. So yeah, so we're flexible. Some seasons it's, it's longer, some seasons. And, yeah, and, and it depends. I, sometimes I can't even get in if we've had a big, big storm. So it's hard to get into the parks. <laughs> well, it's temporary, yeah. So there is, so, there is sort of a cold in some areas, yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I can remember. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I do. I do outside of in North Yarmouth. Yeah. North Yarmouth is a lot of. Yeah, there's people in the neighborhood who so often. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But a lot of times it's like, okay, there's a spiral of lights there. It's kind of pretty obvious that there's a string of lights, but you have seen that somehow it is, so it's not just, it, it's sort of, you know, distributed. We yeah. don't see that. Mm -hmm. 
Is there a way to describe how you do that? Yeah. Well, you you placing the lights around the form? Yeah. And, it's, and make it not look like it's just... Like yeah, no, no. Well, it, you, you just go within... The, so if they're large, you start with a spiral, and then you go, and then you can, you can come back with a spiral, another spiral that goes in. But they, they get to be very even, the placement of the... Unless they've been, unless they've been uh, maintained, you know, redone a little bit, sometimes you have to sort of cross over. I, I don't really prefer crossovers. Um, but sometimes crossovers work, you know, crossing over one wire or the other, because it's just distribution of the lights. I find that sometimes when you're, you're, you're putting the lights on, sometimes those little stupid lights want to line up in the same place. <laughs> I don't get it, because then I put a little kink in it so it starts but it still, you know, it's all of a sudden it's starting again. So yeah, so it's you got to try to keep the random. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if that answered enough. Yeah. yeah I just want to say one other thing though, too. Because remember when my son was younger, he we were, I was living back in Bowdoin, and they said that they would have they would bring the kids to Portland to see the lights. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, nice. yeah. What, one more question? So, what brand of Christmas lights should we get? Uh, <laughs> what would you suggest that lasts the longest? Oh, God. Then I, I, think I think they're getting worse and worse every year. They're made, they're made with diodes now, so they're not, you know, they're not lasting quite as long. Yeah, I, I, I do. I have one source now, S4, that, that I use. But I used to use G, GKI. And there's lots of different ones out there that I get them wholesale. They all do, yeah. yeah. But I'm experimenting with other things. I need to get an R&D team together so I can...